Okay, it's time for the next project. Um, when this kit came out, I thought it was really cool and I was going to get it, and I never got it years ago. Um, but all of a sudden, I got an interest in it because I painted um, a couple of uh, British North Africa figures. So I was like, okay. A lot of times I'll paint figures before I even do a model. Or even buy it even if the figures come out really good then I'm like okay I'll buy the model and put them with the with the vehicle so that's kind of what happened here I, I uh, sent away for this I just got it the other day so let's take a look inside it's an old kit I know and I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen it but um, sometimes old kits are new to me because I've never built one and it's kind of cool that way so let's see this is the Academy kit of the M3 Stuart Honey 135th scale and we've got instructions as always well, this is a painting guide yep, painting guide instructions instead of a booklet it opens up um, basic check for parts if you need new parts send them information and here's the screws I see some rubber band tracks here uh, no flash looks good looks good the turret assembly ah and this is uh, oh yep guide teeth and tracks so that's going to be interesting I'm going to pick if I want to put all these guide teeth on or if I just want to use their rubber band tracks and paint them on like I do anyway. So it could be an option instead of, if these didn't have the guide horns, but they are better. So I don't know if they're not as detailed as the rubber band tracks. We'll have to see when we get into it. But it does have link and link, or separate link tracks I should say all right We've got a body and top so I know Tamiya does this kit so let me just see this real quick open it up so tearing it up I know this is the boring stuff, but okay, pretty nice. It's really cool. I'm not really seeing. It's a little bit. They had to have somebody cut these off the sprue. But anyway, cool model. Uh, I like the size of it, and uh, should be interesting. The whole key for me now is to pick. A canter scheme, or to pick the on the back, it's got a captured Japanese and an American, it's like in a training vehicle. I've done so many canter schemes that um, I kind of wanted it to do just be desert yellow. So I'm gonna have to start looking up some references and start a folder with reference, and uh, then I'll make my decision. But I have seen some photos. Where the canter skein is very, very faded and lots of sand and dust over it. And that might be my route. One quick look at the decal sheet. Looks really good. Um, lots of big markings, that's for sure. So let's see what's going to be. That being said, let's get at it and uh, start building this kit. I plan to do like a time lapse. And I'm going to put a clock, I think, right here and really see how long it takes to build this kit. So let's get at it.
Okay, I'm done with step one. Um, here's everything so far. Now, as you can see, I highlighted the instructions. That's parts I left off because they're small. I don't want them to break as I'm assembling it. I'll put those on last. Uh, so let's get on with today. I think it's almost four o'clock. So we'll get going and see what I can get done today. Okay, this is what I've got so far. I lost a part. It wasn't on the tree. Um, so I went in my spare parts box and I got something that's close. Um, this isn't going to be seen anyway, but I'm going to go ahead and paint the interior uh, just to show how it looks painted. I'm kind of curious anyway too. So um, Let's uh, get at it again today and see what else I can accomplish. Okay, I'm on step six now, and uh, I've been getting references from this kit, or should I say this tank, how it was used in North Africa. I started collecting photos, um, and the instructions have a one or a two for British North Africa, and there's a couple of parts you can do for an American, but that's about it. So I'll be adding these boxes, because um, a lot of the photos show these boxes. And um, weird thing, I, I really didn't care for the way the these side skirts went right here. There's a, <laughs> it's kind of silly way to do it. Just make it go straight. But the uh, Academy kits remind me a lot of Tamaya, um, almost the same. I, it's so funny. I've, I I think I've built over a thousand models in my lifetime, easy, from a kid till now, and I don't think I've ever built an academy. So it's my first one. <laughs> Can't believe it. They always their kits always seemed like they were just copies of Tamiya, and they were the same kit to me when I'd look at them in an advertisement. So I always bought a Tamiya instead of this. So all right, let's. Uh, Let's get going on step six and finish it up. Okay, here we're at the uh completion of pretty much the uh, top part of the tank um, let's see I did add a strap here around these uh, gas cans water cans whatever they are I saw those in the uh, in the reference photos uh, also on the front mud guards there is a in all the photos, there is a line through here where I guess it connects. But there's also some bolts. So what I did, there's an extra drive sprocket in the kit, I guess, for one of the other vehicles. And I just cut them off with a hobby knife and I just glued them on. So that way it's pretty close. And then I also, I didn't want to use the 
support brackets that hang down from here because I saw in a lot of photos they're not there. So I just drilled some holes out that look like that's where they came off. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it for right now. A lot of this detail is going to get covered up because I'm going to put a bunch of tarps and bed rolls and things on it. So. Hey, it's uh, time to paint the interior. Uh, let's get at it. we got a, just a coat of white paint on for the interior, and we're going to weather it now. Okay, here's just a quick, quick weathering. I painted the seats, um, a few of the things inside the interior. Uh, calls to paint it white, so... I mainly just wanted it to look dirtied up, just whatever you could see in the hatches, which you're not gonna really see anything. Uh, if I was to take my time in this, I would definitely have done it way different with different washes, but this just gets a lived in look if you can ever see in the hatches. So let's get uh, working on the rest of it now. Back to assembling the rest of the pieces. done for the day time to take a break um, I went ahead and used the rubber band tracks the individual tracks <laughs> links were just too tedious to hook together I just did not feel like doing it it was a lot to do and I couldn't get them all to stick on right and I was like not nah, not doing it uh, I'll end up weathering it so you won't be able to tell anyway um, inside of the uh, interior white. I'm going to have to paint some of this white. I'm not going to do a lot because, you know, the interior is not that detailed. If it was open vehicle, like a half track, a Jeep, uh, that the uh, interior is seen all the time, then I, I do way more on it. But this is like, nope, you're not going to see it because I got a figure that's going to go in the hatch. And uh, I'm not going to see in there, so I'm going to do very minimal on the uh, interior here because you're not going to see anything but I will paint it white um, so all I got left to do is the turret here and um, we might take a break and I might start the figures Okay, um, got the model all completed. A pretty good model. I mean, it's basic out of the box. It's pretty nice. Good kit. Um, I've sprayed this white just to match what's in there. Uh, that's as far as I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this on, uh, wrap it up, finish. I still got some headlights to put on here that I didn't put on. Uh, I was going to put smoke launchers, but most of the photos, I don't see them. I'm going to leave it off. I do have a couple of photos where they're on one side or the other. 
And these smoke lunches are kind of blah, not detailed, so that's another reason why not to do it. Um, this model is going to have, I'm going to put a bunch of tarps and bed rolls. I think I've said it before, but it's going to cover up so much detail. We, we build these models in detail, and I see guys put photo etch all over the place, and then they cover it up with tarps. And I'm just like, I can't do it. I, I just can't spend the ex that money and then cover it up. So we'll make this thing look cool, though. Um, all right, so let's uh, put this together. And uh, we'll be done for the day. Another hour's work, looks like. Okay, here's a quick peek at uh, the model and one of the figures. I've got two figures for it. Um, and I'll show you how I painted those now, and then we will go back to painting this Stuart Honey. Here are the uh, Gecko figures, British tanker set. Um, they're cleaned up, ready to go. Start painting. You gotta spend a lot of time cleaning up. I mean, I spend probably 20 minutes on each one of these guys cleaning up the uh, mold marks, things like that, getting them together so they they, they, they fit nice. Um, something I wanna show everybody that I do to make my filler for figures. What I do for filler is once the um, liquid cement bottle just has tiny bit of cement and you can't get it with the the brush I cut off sprues from kits especially the ones that I'm working with the figures um, I drop those sprues in there and it makes a putty <laughs> the glue attacks the sprue just like it does when you glue the model together and it just melts it, it melts the plastic down and I use this to put in the seams. And when you do that, you can get seams where you, <laughs> looks like that. You get seams that are disappear. And uh, it's a fast and, and quick way of doing it. You do have to let them dry for about a day um, before you can sand it. But it's my quick, my quick putty. And sometimes I'll put it in an area, actually the putty, and then put the arm or, or leg, whatever. It's just a little tip. I've even actually used it on models too, um, to fill some gaps here and there real quick. So that's what it is. Just a sprue from the kits, dropped in, same plastic. It's into a melted goo. Uh, the less sprue you add in there, the more runny it is, the more sprue, the thicker it is. So I try to keep a consistency about like that. And that's uh, a little thing I do. So hope you guys can use it. So let's go paint these guys, start off. Okay, I've just primed these figures with Tamiya paint, the AS5 light blue. Um, I'm going to try something a little different um, on these guys. I've been doing all kinds of experiments with figures over the years. It's uh, my biggest battle uh, to convert to acrylics because I used to always paint in oils. And uh, this guy, he's really cool because, and he's one of my favorite because he's this guy. And uh, really nice illustrations in this book. It's, it's a really great book for figures. Whoops. The Armed Forces of World War II, Uniforms, Insignia, and Organization. So, excellent book. Excellent book with a lot of 
great details for World War II figures. A lot of a lot of these, you've, you've, they're, they've copied the figures, or the illustrations, and made figures out of them. So, really good book. But I can't wait to paint this one to look like him. So let's get at it. Okay, I'm going to start painting the skin tones of the figures. So what I've done is I put a drop of acrylic paint into a palette. Now, what I have in here is German pale brown. And this is uh, AK718 something brawn, but it's that dark brown. And dark flesh, dark flesh. basic skin tone and I might have to use some red maybe cheeks and lips let's see um, now very important Calvin Tan when he finally told me I talked to him for a while and he said you got to use the retarder this changes everything um, this makes your paint acrylic paint flow it flows better uh, doesn't leave the uh, tide marks it goes into the cracks better stays there dries better um what a difference it's made uh I, you, you can't you have to use this for figure painting if you're going to use acrylics so one drop one drop in each one drop maybe two okay got that in there and we're going to put some water. I'm putting about four drops of water. Okay. And you want to put at least a little drop of flat base from Tamiya or that's I use Tamiya it was recommended so that's what I use um, it's a flat base I'm just gonna put a drop of that with a brush and then we'll get started I use really clean water either spring water uh, filtered water you want water that doesn't have any lime in it or any other chemicals that sometimes are in water and here in Florida we have got all kinds of chemicals in our water so we don't drink it out of the spigot <laughs> H1 so as I said I've got a drop of the acrylic retarder in there some of the matte base And a couple drops of water. You want a consistency that just flows into the cracks and kind of stains the outer portion. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from light to dark. And by doing that, I stain the first one lighter with the lighter flesh and it goes into the cracks and kind of stains the the outer uh, say sections of the face that is the highlight and uh, and then I keep going so that way the final washes are dark and they fill in the voids and the last very dark one will be the least amount because I want that to go into the eyes because I'm not painting eyes anymore I just can't do it so I don't mind the squinty looking eye effect. I think that's fine for soldiers out in the field. Okay, so this is all ready to go, so let's get at it. The first step is the flat flesh. Now, like I said, this is a milky consistency and I'm putting it on the face right now. And this consistency just going to go on and I want it just to stain 
the flesh area. It's like a wash. It is a wash. As you can see, I'm still spreading out this paint. And that retarder, the Liquitex retarder, keeps it from drying too fast. And there, I'm going to get some of this paint out. Paint his arms as well. And as you can see, it's just staining it and falling into the cracks. That's okay. That's what I want. And you want a flat finish. And this actually dries pretty quickly. Okay, the, uh, the figure's dry, doesn't take long. The first uh, coat, I'm probably not gonna use the dark flesh. Um, I'm gonna go straight to the pale brown right here. And like I said, you want it so it's like a wash. Yeah, just thin enough so it goes on like a wash. Because it's too thick. And this is kind of thick. Tone it down a little bit here. Let's add some water. Yeah. So what I know I'm going to have to do now is add a little bit of water to my mixture there. There's a couple of drops. Okay. Stir it up. Always have your paint stirred up really well before you start using it because sometimes acrylics they they start like But to work on acrylics, you're, you're kind of glazing and building up color. And for the most part, a lot of guys start from dark and then glaze over with the lighter colors just a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time until it, you start noticing a, a gradual tone. But I don't have that patience. And every time I do it on these small figures, I just feel like they look like clowns. When you... <laughs> When you look up close, and I just can't, I can't, 
They have clowns. So not bad. I think he'll pass. His buddy's about like about as good as him. Almost. Not quite as good as him. Probably because I like the other guy better. But he'll be fine. Since he's all painted up. Alright. On to the uniform. Okay, I've started the uh, palette for the uniforms of the British um, North Africa figures here. So I've started off with this German beige. And I mixed a tiny bit of dark flesh with it. And then it, those were mixed on all, and then a little bit of white for a highlight in one of the cups there, and German pale brown for the darker shade. And I've got just a regular shade mixed up here uh, for a backup. So let's get started. And uh, once again, I'm gonna do it in washes, lighter to darker, and see how it turns out. Let's get at it. I almost forgot. One of the most important things, a drop of the retarder, but two drops, the one in that one. All right, got to mix that up, and then we're ready. Okay, the uh, first coat is dried, and like I said, this was the lightest color right here. So now I'm going to add the base color as a wash and then finally the shadow so uh, what I've done is successively put washes in lighter to darker if I went darker then put lighter over the top the lighter color would fill into the seams and folds where the shadow should be I don't want that what I'm doing here is tinting the highlights then I'm going to go in with the main color, base color, and that fills in, and then it fills in the cracks and folds, shadow areas, more shadow, and then for the final shadow, I'm going to do the darker, and that should just flow right into the uh, folds and seams, things like that. I may have to add a little more water to it, we'll have to see, so let's get at it. Okay. Uh, we're getting there. Uniform's looking pretty good. Um, it still needs some sharper detail down in the deepest folds. I've mixed up some Tamiya Brown, flat brown, and I added the Liquitex, a couple of drops, and the matte finish to it, and a little bit more water than usual. So, um, this hopefully will just get right down in the deepest folds, shadows, creases. I don't want too much of this at all. So let's get at it. All right, the uh, uniform here with the uh, darker shade in the folds is done. And I'm gonna do the belting with uh, this earth green early. Um, it says surface primer but I'm gonna use it. And I've mixed a light color of it with white and a dark color with some of the brown with the retarder, Liquitex retarder and the flat base. Okay, with the black wash there, really thin down, I put it around the green, anywhere it was green around the belting. I hit that so it fall in the cracks of the green only. Um, I did put it around the bottoms of the sleeves where it would touch his skin and same it on the socks and around his neckline. Um, I'm going to give the belting, the green belting, a little bit of highlight now and that'll be done. Um, I will paint the buttons. First, I'm going to paint them a dark, dark color like black or dark brown. Probably do black on these and then just hit them the tips of the buttons to make them stand out 
And that should be it. And I'm going to hit them with a flat finish. Okay, here's a preview. Um, so I'm going to use a just a small base for this one. Uh, it's uh, one of those plastic cubes, a uh, small plastic cube for a photo to stick inside. And I'm just going to do a little bit of groundwork. Uh, I think I'm going to put some damaged uh, debris from an earlier battle, etc. Um, and I may paint the vehicle on the base since it's a diorama. I like doing that sometimes. Uh, if it's small like this, it actually is just a base that holds my tank so that way I can just keep painting on it and work right on there and it's my base and I don't have to touch it and uh, I've done that a lot I know Verlinden Productions a long time ago had these little small vignette type sets where the figure was molded right into the the groundwork landscape whatever you want to call it and you painted everything as one um so that's that's my goal on this one kind of i've done it with numerous other vehicles like the uh, polaris that i had just posted the last video so that being said i'm going to paint the base black um, i'm going to put styrofoam inside the bottom there for some groundwork base and then i'm going to put magic sculpt over that Press the tank in, probably drill a hole through the bottom and secure it with a wood screw. And then I'll start my painting process all on the base. So it's a little bit different than a lot of people do it, I'm sure, but I've always done things a little different. So let's get at it. Okay, it's time to get started now with tarps and groundwork next. I'm gonna do the tarps for the vehicle. Um, I've got some references in front of me so I can kind of get a feeling and a, a vibe of what I want to do for the tarps. I've got Magic Sculpt A and B two-part putty. <laughs> it's so funny, this time I, I put a couple of drops of uh, acrylic paint in it while I was kneading it up and I was just curious to see what it would do. Um, I don't know. I always try something different just for the heck of it. That's how you learn. So if anybody else has ever messed with uh, adding paint to two-part magic sculpt, let me know how that worked out. I was going to put some more, but I was like, eh, I don't want to mess it up right now. I'll try it on a smaller project. Uh, I'm going to put some baby powder on the uh, parchment paper, roll this out, and get going.
Okay, I got the tarps done. Um, the actual, the acrylic paint changed the color of the putty. So you saw it here first, if you haven't seen it before. I just added a little bit of um, acrylic paint, a couple of drops here and there while I was kneading this together and it turned it green. <laughs> I'm gonna have to try that a little darker on, on a vehicle that's already painted and put some tarps that already have some color and then shade them later, I guess. I don't know, uh, but anyhow. So here's the tarps and some strap kind of things going on here. And, um, so yeah, I may add a few more ropes or something here and there. But other than that, I am got this pretty much I want it here with these tarps um so the base is painted black I actually had some automotive trunk paint or bed paint and it's got like a texture it's kind of cool I might start using that from now on um so the styrofoam's in place this is foam insulation from hardware store I've got some parts here, some photo etched, I'm going to bend up uh, some stuff I'm going to throw into the to the dirt. Um, so I'm going to mix up some more putty and put it on top of this base here. So that's coming up next. Okay, I've got some A and B putty mixed up and I've got the base masked off. Uh, I'm going to lay this down. Uh, so Look at the difference in the color with just a few drops of acrylic paint. So this is kind of interesting. I'll have to use it again one day, maybe in a different type of situation. So, all right, let's get at it.
Okay, groundwork's on. Um, as you can see, I poured some dirt, fine sand on there. Added a little extra texture. Got a bunch of junk here. I pressed the uh, tank into the Sculpey, Magic Sculpt. And I'm going to drill a hole um, through the bottom into it. And I'm gonna drill it, anchor it right down into this uh, base here in a minute. So let me get that done. Clean up a little bit here and keep moving. Okay, here we are so far. Uh, the tank is secured to the base. Uh, here's a look at the figures, the way I want to put them. Uh, and I'm going to paint everything on this diorama base. So next up, we're going to paint and weather it, the whole thing. Tank, base, tarps, everything gets painted right on there. So let's get at it. Okay, I first gave the uh, entire model, diorama, everything, base, everything's attached with Mr. Surfacer 1000. And then I had some Tamiya fine primer and I just misted it over that uh, just to get a little bit of extra highlights. Now I'm gonna go back on the airbrush and start doing some painting on the uh, vehicle and everything. So let's get at it. Okay, with this AK-718, it's a red-brown kind of color. I just added some shadowy breakup on the tank so far. Um, so that's just kind of, I, you know, really hit it underneath a lot around the tracks. Uh, you don't have to be perfect, just, just something to break it up, almost like a camouflage. Uh, I try to go into the corners and cracks as much as possible. Um, you can use a burn umber for this. I use this because I want it to kind of bring out the desert yellow a little bit, but you could use burn umber, brown, anything, a dark color. I try to stay away from black. Um, I have painted my models black, yes, and that works, but for a desert scene, I want everything to kind of be like a brighter color, uh, lighter, you know, harsh sunlight, uh, faded, dusty, so. That's my goal here. And uh, let's get to the next step. I'm gonna use Tamiya Dark Armor mixed with a tiny bit of white, not much. And then I'm gonna successively go a little different and lighter and lighter on it. So let's get at it. Okay, now I've added the Tamiya Dark Armor color. Um, so I've hit every place where the shadow wasn't and it, obviously it's oversprayed and that's fine. That's what I want. It's just not a perfectly painted and dark armor um, paint. I don't care if it's German dark armor, it doesn't matter because when it's weathered and what I'm gonna do next, it doesn't matter as long as it's a, a color that's close to what the British used, I'm good with it. Uh, I didn't hit, you notice I only hit right here with the shadow. I'm gonna hit the groundwork later when I dust this thing with uh, the sand, like where it caused all the dust all over the tank, etc. And then the weathering process will make the tank stand out from the groundwork, but yet it'd still be integrated with it overall. So let's get at the next step is going to be adding some white to the armor yellow. And let's get at this now. Okay, as I said, the first coat in the process was dark yellow, XF60. That was before this. And then I mixed white X2 with the armor, or with the dark yellow. And I've done all the highlights. And this is what you really want. You want a lot of, you want some contrast. Uh, when you put that wash on there, everything's going to pop. So I'm really happy with this. Next, I'll put the decals. Um, let those dry, and then I'm going to dust everything so that way the decals look faded and dusty, and then I'll hit the groundwork with the same color. So I've got to let this dry so I can put the decals because sometimes the decal setting fluid will kind of mess up the acrylic paint, so it's got to be pretty dry, so I'll have to do that. 
probably tomorrow, but I can get that finished up and then uh, we're on our way to getting this guy complete. So let's get at it. Okay, the decals are added. I went with very minimal markings. I'm not gonna do a canter scheme. I want this tank to just stand out on its own. Um, it's gonna be pretty dusty. Um, that's what I'm gonna do now. I've got uh, AK-701. It's uh, it's got a it's like a sandy color to me. Uh, it's a German color, but I'm gonna use it for the groundwork. And then when I'm done just spraying the groundwork, I'm gonna dust this tank, and it's gonna make these um, decals look really faded and dusted over. Uh, I'll end up thinning the paint more for that. So let's get at okay, it. There it is. The uh, groundwork is airbrushed, and I put a spray right over the decals just to give that little faded look. I could have went more, but I'm gonna weather over it, and there's gonna be some pastel weathering. So, okay, so next, I think I'm going to paint the tarps. I'm gonna paint the tarps with artist oils and um, any other details I see on here that need a different color. Um, and uh, the tarps are painted in artist oil because I want them to have like a different texture. So they stand out different than the acrylic paint look. I could paint them with acrylics and blend some shades and shadows and highlights but I'm gonna do it with oils that's what I've done in the past I have a few uh, samples of, of how it really comes out nice in oils for uh, tarps and uh, canvas uh, tops that roll back on on vehicles uh, I did one on a on a small German car that, that just came out amazing looking to me um, because you could really blend and and shade and, and blend with the artist oils since they don't dry fast. So that's what I'm gonna do with the tarps. So I'm gonna mix up some artist oils and uh, get at Okay, it. I've got a palette here that I made out of cardboard with artist oils, white, yellow, black, and red. Um, if you know how to mix colors, you can get everything you want from yellow, red, blue, black, and white. Um, to make the khaki color I want, it's yellow, black, a little bit of red, and then the white and the black for the highlight and the shadow. Um, the best way to learn how to do this is a color wheel. Go out and get a color wheel at an at a art store, craft store, whatever, online. Um, color wheels will help you. I used, used to use them a long, long time ago, so I, I know now which colors to mix together. But it really helps you when you're going to use oils and even acrylics, too. So let's get at painting the tarps. When putting artist oils on, you want to spread it out. Really spread it out. You don't want to put it on thick. Um, and a lot of times it's really good to uh, put an undercoat of a color close to what you want because you're, you're almost putting a glaze over it. But this I'm putting it, it's thick enough that it doesn't matter. Um, and I'll be able to shade and highlight this after I'm done. Some of these tarps I'm going to add, make them a little darker than others so they have a little contrast and that way they, you know, more appealing looks better instead of everything the same color even though they're all going to be dusted up. What I'm going to do is while this is wet, because artist oil is going to take a couple hours if not more to dry, I'm going to sprinkle on some pastels into these oils of kind of this color here and just push it in and I'll show you that when I'm done painting this. Okay I've got the uh, base paint done on it. Uh, it's just a uh, a quick put the color on there that I want and now I'm going to highlight and shadow it. First I'm going to put shadows in there and what you do is put the shadows in then blend it with a clean brush. 
And if you've noticed, I use a flat brush because you want to spread this out flat. I mean, you don't want to put it on thick. If you're putting it on thick, you're not doing it right. You want to actually spread it and just keep pushing that brush until the paint is flat on there. Um, you're going to have to practice probably if you've never done it. And I'm going to go around with, with uh, black and go under the creases and folds and everything. Put some black in there and then blend that. And then on the highlights, put some white. Um, but I, I really like this color. You, you can see I've worked on different colors here, making them different colors. So you really don't have to do a lot here if you're going to put the pastel weathering on afterwards. And I'm going to show you that in a minute. But let me uh, blend and uh, highlight let me uh, shadow and highlight this and uh, we'll get onto that. Then I gotta paint all these details. Those two rucksacks came with the kit. Uh, I had the helmet in my spare box part. The box came with the kit. The uh, 30 cal boxes came with the kit. Um, so that's it for now and let's get this finished up. Okay, I've got the shaded, dark shade in there. And with a clean brush, you just blend it in. Blend it all in. And then after you've done this a few times, you know, by the blending, then you clean, wipe off the brush again. And wipe off what you've done on the brush and then keep going and then the highlights same way I put highlights on and then with a clean brush blend it in okay the tarps now uh, the shadows have been blended in and what I'm going to do now is with white paint I'm going to go for the highlights and those obviously going to go in the most raised areas I'm putting this in and then I'm gonna blend it in with a clean brush as I did with the shadow um, now as you can see this looks like well you know it's doesn't look like it's in the desert these tarps look really you know like they're probably in the Western Front um, well first of all they're glossy and second of all, I haven't put the pastel uh, powder on that I'm going to grind up into this. And once I do that, it's really going to integrate everything into it. Now, when I do the wash, I do not want the wash on these tarps. It'll just ruin the whole effect. So the wash is going to, I'm going to keep it to the, the metal armor parts. Um, so that being said, let me finish up the highlights and then I'll show you okay everything's blended together now um, it's really glossy that's not good but um, when I put the pastels on it it's gonna flatten it out and then when I'm done with everything uh, after the wash etc I'm gonna spray it with a matte finish the whole vehicle um, now I've got some of this equipment here. I probably should have painted some of it before I painted the tarps, but I'm gonna, I think I might mess around with some washes on those and just highlight. And like I said, this is a canvas right now. I'm working like I'm working in a artist canvas. So I like doing it that way. Uh, I just feel like I'm, I'm really into the whole scene at once and I, everything's blending together and I'm, I'm working as, instead of uh, 
one dimensional canvas, I ain't got a three dimensional canvas. Um, I'm gonna have to put some washes on those rubber tires um, just to simulate that they're rubber. Uh, they're very dusty, but in photos you can still see that they're they're a darker color. Same with the tracks. I've got the rubber tracks and then the metal teeth. So I'm going to have to simulate that with washes. Same with the, the junk here on the ground. Um, so I've got to paint the 30 cal. Um, a few other little details. So it's a big process. Uh, it's this isn't something you just throw together and it's done. Um, there's no real way to do long shortcuts. You can find some shortcuts, but some stuff you just have to do. Um, so anyway, this is the tarps. Now I'm gonna grind up some pastels and show you what I do with those. Okay, I've ground up some pastels. All these colors here I've had forever. And I'm going to put them, put this into the tarps. Now the artist oil is still wet. This is going to actually change the color a little bit of these tarps so they're not just so stark. And I'm working it in there. Really gives it a dry effect too. And I really like the effect this does because there was a lot of obviously dust in North Africa. So. See how the uh, artist oil is getting on the uh, brush. But that's it. I'm going to just do that and then I'll show you the results when I'm finished. Okay, there it is. Wow, <laughs> what a difference. I think it looks cool. It, they, it always works out this way. Man, it, it ties so much stuff together. I don't even have to paint that helmet. Um, and I, the helmet just now just blends right into everything. Like it's been sitting there for a while and I might put a little chips on it. I don't know. I think I might leave it just as it is. Um, so I really like this effect that, that it does. It, it gives it a good dusty effect that's really like into the fabric and it just turns these uh, tarps into like, like fabric. So once again, I just ground up pastel. that boom 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 I'll end up using this again on the final model to dust around the tracks and the wheels and the, the model itself um, it'll just tie everything together I'll be dusting all this stuff up a little bit but I'm still gonna put a wash on these I'm gonna pot, put a wash on the tank now now this step I did it now but Doing the tarps after a wash on here might be a little bit better idea because now the wash is going to get up in there and I really don't want it to affect these tarps. So i got to be really careful, but I do want the wash to get up underneath them so it gives it that shadow, extra shadow effect. Um, so now I'm going to mix up a wash or get the wash ready. I really don't mix it. I right? apply it. A little bit of oils on a on a little container and then mixed the terpenoid with it as I go and uh, I'm gonna be doing that now and that's gonna just make a huge huge difference in the way this tank looks so let's get at it okay I'm gonna start the wash now I've got a dark brown um, oil paint here I'm gonna put it uh, in the uh, video here description to show you what this color is it's not an umber and, and the label on the 
paint came off, so I'm gonna have to look it up, but I'll, I'll put it on here so you can see it. Um, terpenoid, and I've got, like I said, oil, mix it in here, uh, get what I want, and then I'm gonna start. There you go, boom, boom, boom. I didn't want to use an umber because I didn't want it to uh, see I've mixing it out here so that way it doesn't just look like it's right here yeah good 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 that's what I want when that's on the whole model it's gonna be cool so let's get at that and then I'll show you the results once I've done everything well, nobody can tell me that a wash isn't the most important thing on an armored vehicle model. Um, what a difference it makes. <laughs> I, uh, I ended up mixing some black paint here and there with the brown to get a little few different effects. Um, I ended up putting some scratches on the helm, German helmet there. Um, and what else did I do? Put some washes in that box. I ended up mixing some paint for the 30 cal ammo boxes. I got a little bit I gotta hit on there. Um, and I did my best to keep the wash off the sand, the sandbags, the tarps. So that's good. Um, what I've got to do, and I put a little bit of the wash on the groundwork here, uh, and that's gonna change too when I put the dry pastels. So now what I've got left to do is, I'm gonna put a, mix up some of this black on here, artist oil, and make a little wash to put on the rubber portions of the tires. I'm just gonna make the wash and just touch those tires and let it roll around it right there on there, on the base as it is. Um, I'm going to also hit those teeth with a really thin black wash since they were metal, but they had a lot of dust on them. Uh, the gas cans, I put some scratches of green, which I made up in my, with my artist oils. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't want to use a burnt umber because I didn't want this vehicle to get really dark so that's why some of these bolts you can see I used a little I mixed a little bit of the black artist oil and uh, just hit a few of the bolts here and or rivets I guess um, so yeah it's getting there and it's uh, I think it's looking kind of cool it's looking good the final touch the uh, the dried pastels are really gonna tie everything together so we're on the final stretch, I think. So let's get at it. Okay, so I added the wash, light thinned wash of artist oil mixed with terpenoid black onto those road wheels. Just let it flow around it. Doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, you don't want stark perfect black and it makes it easy the way I do it here um, because everything's already done. So I don't have to fiddle around putting in wheels and then stick them on there. Like I said, this is a canvas. Um, I put a wash on the teeth and the tracks. Um, and now all I'm gonna do is the pastel powders dust it up. So what I want to do, similar to what I did with the tarps, we're we'll just get some stuff on there like that, and then get it in there. Because let me tell you, North Africa, I've got friends in the military that were there, and they say it's just powdered dust everywhere. And now, this also, what this is going to do is tie the weathering and colors together to really form a cohesive look here. You can 
see I painted some of this junk here. Helmet, wheel, stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna finish doing that. Um, I'm actually gonna even put it onto the vehicle in places like this. dust it up and uh, you know the whole chipping thing I may add a few chips wear parts you know around edges here when I'm done I'm sure the dust went over the chips but I'm gonna just do it very lightly I don't see a lot of big heavy chips on the vehicles in the uh, the reference photo so I'm not gonna go heavy on that um, I just want to keep everything really a light color and uh, just still got to paint the 30 cal black and highlight it same with this 30 cal here um, like I said I put some chipping on the uh, these cans made them green green chips mm. The headlights, they came as plastic, but I had some some clear uh, headlights from another kit, and I stuck them in there, and after I painted, I scratched off the, uh, the paint, so it's kind of cool. It's kind of clear looking something there. So anyways, let's uh, finish putting this pastels on, and we'll take a look at it after that. And we're really close to being finished. I'm so glad this has taken a while. I'll tally up all the hours and um, we'll see how long it took me to do all this. The hours don't include the reference material I had to look up, um, things like that, you know, referring to reference, looking up, finding reference, uh, preparation. But for the most part, it's pretty close. So. Let's get at it. Okay, it's finished. I'm really pleased. I really like the way the uh, the tarps came out. Uh, added a flag here, did some stretch sprue, uh, red paper, and just stuck it on there real quick. Um, figures on the map. I found some World War II maps on the internet and uh, shrunk them down printed them out and uh, it's a perfect place for it the pastel weathering really tied everything together the tracks and everything see and look at the the road wheels just from a wash I really I really like the way it came out the uh, pastels tie as I said tied it all together it's very sandy looking and uh, I'm pleased with it. I hope everybody enjoyed the video and learned something from it that maybe you haven't. And if you have, I just hope you enjoyed watching it, listening to some of the uh, techniques I do. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. I love to answer them. And... Uh, I never even sprayed a flat finish on this. It came out so dumb matte finish that it's all fine. Um, even the tarps, putting the uh, pastels on made the artist oil dry <laughs> in no time. I guess it just soaks out all the linseed. Uh, it's a really cool technique. I'd like to see, you know, if somebody else tries it, just putting the pastels right into the uh, wet, artist oils to get this effect. It's really cool. I'm going to try to do it on more things. Um, but yeah, machine guns painted black, rubbed with uh, graphite. Uh, and uh, that's about it. So once again, I hope you enjoyed it. It's a long video, I know, but it takes a long time to do these so thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned uh, for more armor models by Bart Lottie.